everybody, Miss Roberts here. I gotta tell you, this is like the highlight of my day every day. I love just sitting down for a minute and reading with you. It is so much fun for me. And I love that we get to spend this time together and that we're sharing these books together. And I'm loving every minute of it. And I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate your interest and your enjoyment of these books with me. And it's just awesome. Okay, so today we start Pirates Past Noon. Chapter One, Too Late. Jack stared out his bedroom window. The rain kept falling and falling. The TV said it would stop by noon. Said the T. <laughs> My goodness. The TV said it would stop by noon. Said Annie, his seven-year-old sister. It's already at past noon. Said Jack. But we have to go to the treehouse. Said Annie. I have a feeling the M person will be there today. Jack pushed his glasses into place and took a deep breath. He wasn't sure he was ready to meet the M person. The m the mysterious person who had put all the books in the magic treehouse. Come on, said Annie. Jack sighed. Okay, he said. You go get your raincoat and boots. I'll get the medallion and the bookmark. Annie ran to get their, their rain gear. Jack reached into his drawer. He took out the medallion. It was gold. The letter M was engraved on it. Then he took out the bookmark. It was made of blue leather. It had a, the same M on it. Both M's matched the M that was, that was on the floor of the treehouse. Jack put the medallion and the bookmark into his backpack. Then he threw in his notebook and pencil. Jack liked to take notes about important things. I got the rain stuff, called Annie. Jack picked up his pack and went down stairs. Annie was waiting by the back door. She was putting on her boots. Meet you outside, she said. Jack pulled on his raincoat and boots. Then he put on his backpack and joined her. The wind was blowing hard. Freddy said go, shouted Annie. They kept their heads down and charged into the rainy wind. Soon they were in the Frog Creek woods. Three branches sw oh sorry not three three branches swayed, flinging rainwater everywhere. Yuck! Said Annie. They splashed through puddles until they came to the tallest oak tree in the woods. They looked up. Tucked between two branches was the treehouse. It looked dark and lonely against the stormy sky. Hanging from the treehouse was a rope ladder. It was blowing in the wind. Jack thought of all the books up there. He hoped they weren't getting wet. The M person's been here, said Annie. Jack caught his breath. How can you tell, he said. I can feel it, she whispered. She grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Jack followed. Inside the treehouse, it was chilly and damp, but the books were dry. They were all neatly stacked along the wall, just the way they had been the day before. Annie picked up the castle book on top of the one stack. It had taken them to the time of the castles. Remember the night, she said? Jack nodded. He would never forget the night who had helped them. Annie put down the castle book. She picked up the next book on the stack. It was the dinosaur book. That had taken them to the time of the dinosaurs. Remember, she said? Jack nodded. He'd never forget the pteranodon who had saved him from the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Then Annie held up a book about ancient Egypt. Meow, she said. Jack smiled. The Egypt book had taken them to the time of the pyramids. A black cat had had come to rescue, come to their rescue there. And here's the book about home, Annie said. She held up the book with a picture of their hometown in it, Frog Creek, Pennsylvania. Jack smiled again. The Pennsylvania book had brought them back home at the end of each of their adventures. Jack sighed. Okay, we still had two main questions. Who was the M person who had put all these books here? And did the knight, the pteranodon, and the cat all know the M person? Finally, Jack reached into his backpack. He took out the gold medallion and the leather, the leather bookmark. He placed them on the floor right in the spot where the M glowed faintly on the woods. Rain blew into the treehouse. Brr, said Annie. It's not very cozy today. Jack agreed with her. It was too wet and cold. Look, Annie pointed to an open book lying in the corner. 
I don't remember a book being open. Me either, said Jack. Annie picked up the book. She stared at the picture on the page. Wow, this place looks great. She followed the picture to, she showed the picture to Jack. He saw a sunny beach, a big green parrot sitting on a palm tree, and a ship sailing on the blue sea. Another gust of rain blew into the treehouse. Annie pointed at the picture. I wish we were there instead of here, she said. Yes, yeah, said Jack. But where is there? Too late, came a squawk. Jack and Annie turned quickly. Sitting on the branch outside the window ledge of the treehouse was the green parrot. Exactly like the parrot in the picture. Too late, the parrot squawked again. A talking parrot, said Annie. Is your name Polly? Can I call you Polly? Suddenly, the wind started to whistle. Oh, no. Now we're in big trouble, said Jack. The wind blew harder. The leaves shook. The treehouse started to spin faster and faster. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. Then everything was still. Absolutely. Jack opened his eyes. Too late, squawked Polly. Jack felt hot. Oh, sorry, I pressed it. Chapter two, the bright blue sea. Jack felt hot sunlight streaming into the treehouse. He sm smelled salt water. He heard the sound of waves. He and Annie looked out the window. The treehouse was in a palm tree. Beyond was a bright blue sea. A tall sailing ship was on the horizon. It was just like a picture in the book. Too late, squawked Polly. Look, said Annie. Polly was flying in circles above the treehouse. Then she swooped down to the ocean. Come on, let's follow her. Let's go in the water, said Annie. She took off her rain there Blech. She took off her raincoat and dropped it on the floor. Wait, we have to study the book first, said Jack. He started to reach for the book, but Annie grabbed it. You can read it on the beach, she said. Without even looking at the cover, she shoved the book into Jack's backpack. He sighed. Actually, the water did look wonderful. Okay, Jack said. He took off his raincoat, too. Come on, Annie handed Jack his backpack, then started down the ladder. Jack folded the, folded the raincoat and put it next to the stack of books. He put on his backpack, and then he went down the ladder. As soon as Annie hit the sand, she ran towards the ocean. Jack watched her wade into the water. She was still wearing her rain boots. Your boots, Annie, called Jack. She shrugged. They'll dry out. She said. Jack took off his boots and socks. He put them beside his pack. Then he rolled up his jeans and ran across the hot sand into the waves. The water was warm and clear. Jack could see shells and tiny fishes. He shielded his eyes against the sun and peered out at the sea. The tall ship seemed seemed a bit closer. Where's Polly, said Annie. Jack glanced around. No sign of Polly. Not in the palm tree, not on the sunlit sand, not over the bright blue sea. When Jack looked out the sea again, the ship seemed even closer. Now Jack could see its flag. As he, st as he stared at the ship's flag, a chill went through him. The flag was black with a skull you know what that means? Oh man, he breathed. He stir He started out of the water. What's wrong, said Annie. She splashed after him. Jack ran to his backpack. Annie followed. He grabbed the book from his backpack. He looked at the cover for the first time. He and Annie read the title of the book. Yikes, said Annie. Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack read aloud. And we will have to find out what happens next with the pirates tomorrow. Thank you again for reading with me. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. Bye.